this is again another session of uh, School of Airway. I want to talk about something called the 10 second lie. Just as bad as one of the lies, you, biggest lies in medicine. Minimum interruptions during CPR, right? It's just already in the coffin position. This may not even be the ideal way of doing CPR. So an oracle of possibly doing CPR spontaneously with a device that alternates pressures in the chest and the belly, a device that does it like this, or you two di different people doing this alternating wise. But the biggest line in medicine is the pause that occurs almost every intubation that happens. Does that happen in 10 seconds? Does that happen in the 10 second pause in between breaths given through a BVM to the face? or during the 10 second, uh, or the few seconds that are allowed for BVM, and then rescue CPR is happening, 30 to two, or uh, the 10 seconds you're allowed to feel for a pulse and look for at the rhythm to see if it's a shock of rhythm on the cardiac monitor. It's such a big lie, right? This is what you'll see, right? Some people actually give RSI meds for a person with no pulse and cardiac arrest. Another delay that's not necessary. Some persons do not train to intubate while they're doing CPR, and others are. I train my students how to intubate with CPR. It's a pain in the ass, All right? But it can get done. You can do double dips, little girls can do double dips, older men can do it, older women can do it. It's like double dutch. Enter when there's an opening, not when the door is closed, not when the cords are opening and closing, but when they're closed, Wait, they open, get that in, okay? I haven't seen cholangial spasm acutely happening in a person with no pulse or near death, okay? So, what do I see, what do I see? Oh, I see a little kidney bean and a little bit of rice. So I'm gonna go suction. You know what? I'm gonna get a better view. You know, I see some of the cords, but not all the cords. ELM, I mean Craig, Silent Maneuver, I don't know what it's called this month. 10 seconds have passed. I think I got it, I think I got it. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Stop CPR, stop. I know it's more than 10 seconds, I'll get, I'll get. The lies we tell ourselves. If you think this is going to be a difficult intubation, just use video laryngoscopy, okay? Or use a bougie, or use a D technique, a D loop technique. If you're using a bougie, like a stylet, allow the tube to come out of the ET tube, like a stylet. But for once, because it's the bougie, you don't care if it's poking out a little bit, let the tip go up, intubate with it. You have problems, you can disengage the loop. That was created. And use like a straight up bougie. I see, see something, I see something. Push it down to the carina. And commit the rest of the tube of going in. Okay? One way to get around the 10 second lie. Prepare for a difficult intubation because you just made it more difficult with the CPR. Unless you're that good waiting for a pause and you're doing for a pulse check looking on the monitor. If you're that quick and you're that good, do it. If you're even better and you're comfortable with it, intubate with while they're doing CPR. Okay, it's still C A B D, not A B C D anymore. Right? So if you if there's enough people and manpower to get to intubate. You don't have an LMA or a King LT around you, you can bag them. Some even say in Arizona, high flow oxygenation of the face mask only. Doesn't hurt to throw a high flow nasal cannula either. Minimum interruptions. Don't focus too much on the LA. It's nice to have that if you have the staff and the skill set and the equipment to do it. Welcome to and bye for this session titled The 10 Second Lie During CPR.